dear uncles. Hello. Uh, we, we, we do this uh, weekly. We, mm-hmm. we, 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 as we said earlier, we go out of our way to make sure it happens. Yep. Hell or high water. Yeah. Or uh, a little bit of snow. To give you all out there an ad-free product. Yes, indeed. Uh, and some of you care to uh, kick in a few bucks just to make sure that we keep going and to show your appreciation. And we sure do appreciate it. Absolutely. So yeah. uh, we have some folks that we'd like to thank uh, on that front. So thanks this week. Go to Alec, to Hypatia, mm. oh. to Brian, mm. and I owe a heaven to Nat. Oh, I, hey, I, Nat. I, I was oh. unprepared last week. Uh, I was jet lagged and crazed. So that's thank so. You, thank you for your patience, Nat. But yes, I, think, I think it's probably about to be rewarded. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Here we go. Here's the thing, Nat. We spend a lot of time on this show trying to come up with what version of heaven might, what a version of heaven might look like. It can't just be sitting on clouds blissfully playing golden harps because that is obviously stupid. I also don't think that it can be a big hedonistic orgy where everybody is both excited and relieved at all times. Mm-hmm. We can't be too reductive with heaven because if we're going to spend eternity somewhere doing something, then that idea has got to be huge because too much of anything is just that too much. So I tried to come up with a heaven for you, Nat, that was enormous. Something so vast and expansive, even that even given eternity, you could never grow bored or weary of it. I searched for the vocabulary to describe a heaven that might actually, honest to God, be good. Hmm. But I couldn't come up with one, so you get ham. (laughs) That's right, Nat. I'm sending you to ham heaven. I hope you're not vegan. Look, I don't want to be that. Or (laughs) Muslim. Right, exactly. Or or Jewish. Oh, well. Who cares? I don't want to be that guy who goes on a trip, and then that's all he can talk about for three months. So I'm really trying to tone it down to two months. Anyway, I don't know if you've ever been to Spain, but the ham there is a delicacy that is prized throughout the world. A treat that can fetch incredible prices because of its rich, subtle flavors and beautiful texture. The Spanish ham of note, Himan Iberico. That mm-hmm. Iberian delight that, derived, uh, that is derived only from black Iberian breed of pig, or pigs that are at least 50% of that breed, if you want to get technical. Now this is heaven... So I'm not going to skimp on you. You're getting the good stuff. Black label, 100% jamón ibérico de belota, which, Uncle Doug, do you know what belota is in Spanish? Belota. Pelota or bel- belota? B-E-L-L-O-T-A. Bellota, no. Oh, bellota, that's right. Yeah. That's acorn ham, baby. Ooh. And it is the pure dope. Let me tell you something. This ham starts out as adorable little piglets, who, as soon as they are weaned, are fattened on barley and maize. Wow. I, I, I would say corn, but Wikipedia said maize, and I don't know if there's actually a difference there, so I'm just going with maize right now. Anyway, after several weeks of uh, grain chubbying, the pigs are set free. Is grain chubbying a technical term? I'm sorry it, to interrupt. It is now. Okay. I, I, I invented that word, but I don't see why we shouldn't all use it. It's making me hungry. Yes, indeed. Uh, the pigs are then set free in the oak forests on the border of Spain and Portugal. Doesn't that sound nice? Yeah. They roam around the forests eating mainly acorns and chestnuts, olives sometimes, you know, roots, whatever they can find. It's the high life. Yeah. Hog heaven, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not really hog heaven because it's your heaven. And, ha- and the hogs are about to die. Oh. They gather them bitches up, slaughter them, and then lop off the legs, because that's the hammiest part, apparently. And then they salt and dry those legs whole and uh, for at least 12 months. And voila, or whatever the Spanish equivalent to voila is. It's <laughs> ham! Yes, and not just any ham. Rich, buttery ham with a depth of flavor that will knock your socks off. Mmm, you can actually taste the nuttiness that comes from the acorns. Mm. But 
before you can really taste it. You'll have to carve it from the leg, which is actually really hard, and people t- lose fingers and all parts of hands and stuff in the process. Huh. But we'll get you a really sharp knife and maybe even one of those chainmail gloves so that you don't hurt yourself, which I literally saw a guy using to cut the, uh, the ham off of, a, off of a leg. And that's it. Congratulations, Nat. You know, on your ham. <laughs> and enjoy your heaven for all eternity. Amen. There are some people who would look forward to that heaven. I'm, I'm among them myself. <laughs> Way to go, Nat. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've eaten. Uh, I've, I've, I have tasted of the hubugo myself, and uh, and I think I could uh, survive in that heaven for the first fifty. Yeah, exactly. Minutes, so, I literally, I literally tired of that ham so quickly. It was. Yeah. It's everywhere. It is so ubiquitous in Spain, and uh, and it's delicious a couple times. <laughs> but you. You probably still have the grease in your mouth. It just cannot be. You cannot get rid of it. So, if you want to, if you want to join the ranks of the the gnats of the world and go to a, a cured meat heaven of your own kind, you can just go to howtoheretic dot com. Go to the support us link. Click it. That's the Patreon. Put all the money you've got in there. Hit daily. Whatever you got to do. And uh, support us that way. And if you can't do it, or even if you can, please give us five stars anywhere you can. iTunes, Stitcher, it just helps the good people of the world find their way to our little manger. Right? Let's move on. (laughs) 